We've looked at three of the four softwares that make up the suite of NBEMS. We've looked at FLDigi, FLMSG, FLWRAP, and in this program we're going to examine FLAMP, which is the Amateur Multicast Protocols, and basically it's the software that allows us to transfer files. When you open FLAMP for the first time, this is what the window looks like. You notice across the top we have tabs like we normally do in the other programs. So we have a Receive tab, a Transmit tab, an Events tab, and a Configure tab. So let's go to the Configure tab and configure FLAMP to operate. And this is very similar to some of the other configurations you've seen before. Just put your call sign in, information about your location. Uh, these first uh, three are things that you've kind of seen before where we're trying to decide uh, what we want uh, FLDigi to sync to for modem purposes. Uh, I choose to set it up this way, so auto-sync FLDigi to the FLAMP mode selector. In other words, whatever the mode is in FLAMP, FLDigi will change to it just prior to the transmit. Uh, so I suggest you set it up like this and we'll be consistent. Uh, you want to enable transmit on a report, and we'll show you how to do a report later. And then just go ahead and set up the rest of these cues like they are here with autosave and marking uh, unpronto data. Um, the very bottom th thing here where it says enable transmit uh, and receive intervals. If you're using a repeater, you want to enable this. Uh, if we were using a repeater, it'll transmit for one minute and then it will un stop transmitting for three seconds and then start transmitting again. Uh, we don't want to time out the repeaters and so you can set this uh, three or four or five seconds, uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, so that uh, when we use repeater work that we don't time them out. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why we want to do a verbal handshake before and after transmissions uh, so that you don't interrupt uh, a file transfer when it's going to pick up and keep transferring. Uh, so click that if you're using repeaters. So let's come over and look at the transmit tab and look at how we load and transmit uh, a file using FLAMP. First thing we want to do is go and fet get the file that we want to use. And right here where it says remove and add, the add button is where we go to select the file we want to transmit. So we'll click on the add button and it just brings up your typical interface. Um, I'm going to go to the FLAMP folder because uh, I have some files there, uh, sample files. But this is where your receive and transmit copies will be kept. So I'm going to go to my sample file. I created that. And I'm just going to pick up one of these old weather reports and load it as a file. So you can see that there's a file here. Um, I can add multiple files. If I click on add again and uh, go uh, pick out a, another file, uh, so let's say we want to do this file and we open that. Uh, see, we can have multiple files. Okay, and what we can do is we can select a file and we can either transmit just that file or transmit the whole queue. Uh, so you can actually transmit multiple files uh, if you wish to. Uh, to remove a file, you just select the file and click on remove and it will ask you to confirm it and it will remove the file from the queue. So that's how we load files in and out of the queue. And then we just want to put the information, uh, the station we were sending it to, if it was someone specific. It has the file name, you'll notice here, and I could put a description in. Uh, you can leave these uh, size and uh, transmit, repeat, and header repeats uh, where they are. Notice this number here. There's going to be 18 blocks in this file. And what happens is FLAMP transfers one block at a time. If you miss a block, then we can do a request to get just the blocks that we're missing. So in this case, you know it's going to be 18 blocks, and it's going to take a minute and 38 seconds to make this transfer using MT632KL. Uh, you can compress files as part of the transfer. Uh, you'll notice that helps some on my timing here, so that's just a preference you can have. Uh, or you can just send the file as just plain text and not uh, block it at all. Uh, but what we will normally do is leave these as they are, and uh, we'll have 18 blocks at a minute and 38 seconds. 
Uh, so really at this point, uh, we can go ahead and transmit this file. So I'll go ahead and start this transmitting. To start the transmit, you just click on the XMIT uh, transmit button. So I'll click on that, and you can see that it takes off and starts transmitting that file. You can see here where it's uh, putting the headers in. Uh, it's important to recognize when you're actually seeing the transfer occur, you can actually see the block numbers if you look carefully. Uh, so you can see here's the first block, there's the second block, and you can read the third block right there, the three. Uh, so you can recognize the blocks as they go along. So let's take a look at what that looks like on the reception side. So this is an example of one of our receiving stations. And you can see it has the file name and information about it. And you can see here that we're missing blocks. There's no data in the window, uh, so the transmission is not complete. Uh, you even have a percentage of uh, what it received. So you can see these are the blocks that we're missing, and this is the verbal uh, display of that. Uh, so we need to tell the originating station that we're missing some blocks. To do that, you send a report. Uh, when we click on this report, it's going to automatically send a very short transmission back to the receiving station telling the, receive, the transmitting station which blocks we missed. So I'll just click on report and say, you ready to transmit? We'll say yes. And then you can see it will go ahead and transmit uh, that information. Uh, you can see what the actual transmission is. Uh, that it's going to send a very short transmission just showing the missing blocks that we're missing. Now each station uh, will do this, uh, so you may have several different stations that will need to send short transmissions in uh, to tell which blocks that they're missing. So let's go take a look at the transmitting station and how would they deal with that. So after all the receiving stations have sent in their reports, uh, each report will look like this. And the main thing to see is that it shows the missing blocks. So these are the missing blocks that this particular station uh, didn't get. Uh, but you may get multiple transmissions. You may have three or four different stations that missed different sets of blocks. Uh, so how you deal with that is the original transmitting station will come up and click on Fetch. And Fetch will go out and look at all of those reports and add up all of the missing blocks uh, that are left here. Uh, so at this point, instead of transmitting all 18 of the original, it's being a much more efficient and just transferring the blocks that were actually missed by other stations. Uh, so to send this out, all we do at this point is hit Transmit or Xmit, and it will transmit just those blocks. So this is a much more efficient way to do this uh, in terms of uh, transmit time. And you can see it's transferring just the blocks that were missed. So let's go look at the receiving station now. So here we have the completed message at the receiving station. All of the information is filled in. There are no missing blocks. And you can actually see in the data section the actual message if it's a text type of message. Uh, the other thing that you see is you've got 100% reception. Uh, so there are several things we can do with this message at this point. Uh, we can save it. Now you notice on its auto saving when it receives it, uh, but if I'd have made any changes to it, uh, I could have saved it. Uh, I can remove this message, which will basically clear this whole uh, receive area. Um, the other thing I can do is come down and relay this message. Uh, so if I had received this file and wanted to relay it on, 
uh, I could hit relay here and it would automatically transfer the same file with the same information in the header uh, on to the next station. Uh, the difference being is a relay it doesn't change any of the original information so the originating station will not receive the message. Uh, the, the system is smart enough to know in a relay uh, that it's sending a file that you already have. Uh, so that's the whole purpose of relay. And then at that point we would go through the process of letting the relayed stations send in reports and then you could fetch those here uh, and then complete the transmission with the additional blocks that you need to see. Uh, the other way to do it, if you're not relaying it, is we could just send this to the transmitting queue. And so when I click on to transmitting queue, it wants me to save the file. It'll give it a new name, and I'll save that. And then when I come over to the transmit tab, it's now loaded up in the transmit tab uh, as a new message. Uh, so those are the two ways that we can uh, forward this particular file, either as a relay or as an original uh, transmission. Uh, so that covers uh, FLAMP and how to do uh, transmissions of files. Uh, one thing I'll caution you on is be very careful with the size of your files. The whole purpose in emergency communications is to send short messages and short files. Uh, so don't send extremely long files uh, even though it'll break it up into blocks uh, and that is a good way to send it. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope this whole series has been helpful to you is to give you a basic understanding of FLDigi and narrowband emergency messaging system. Uh, please uh, send any comments my way. Uh, and again, thank you for taking the time to watch. Uh, 73 from K4REF. <laughs>